My name is Andor, my musical name is Logos, and this is called the Cyborg. So it has three sides. This is the heart of it right here, the controls. The Moog Voyager is the sort of heart and soul of this. Uh, I use the theremin in a very unique way, not so much for its, its actual sound, but as a controller to manipulate the sounds of other instruments. I got my MIDI controller. Down at the, the feet, I have the Taurus bass pedals. Also an analog bass instrument made by Moog Music. So I have an analog tower and a digital tower. The APC-40 is how I trigger everything and uh, manipulate effects, although I also use these. So for instance, I have a patch uh, in an instrument called Massive. It's a virtual instrument. and. I'm using the uh, chaos pad as a controller for that, so. Now the joystick, uh, I'm using some software that allows you to turn controller signals into MIDI signals, usually with filters, um, which is like changing how much of the frequencies you're allowing to pass through. So the really fun side though is the analog side. What I have down here is a patch bay. So back in the days before MIDI, before we used computers to communicate between synthesizers, uh, they used to use control voltage and, and this system still does. It's sort of like an old telephone switchboard, you know, where you had like patch calls in. So I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of things with this. Um, the first thing and the, the sort of the most obvious thing that I, I do a lot, you see me when I'm performing, is I, I control the filter of the Voyager with uh, the theremin. Just to make sure that it's clear what, uh, what I mean by the filter, it's that sound right there. Basically it, it's, it's getting rid of all the, all the frequencies above a certain point. Well, I can use the theremin the way that I just use that knob to control the, the cutoff of it. So now we're going out from the theremin pitch out and going into the Voyager filter. So now when I play this note, you hear it's not actually changing the fundamental note of the, of the sound. It's not changing it like that, it's changing the harmonics of it. It's what they, uh, what we call timbre, it's the, the quality of different harmonics that make up a sound, so. Well, there's other things besides the theremin that I can send control voltages out of. Instead of coming out of the theremin pitch out, I can use this uh, control processor here, which has other options, such as a sample and hold, which is basically a way of making random voltages happen. The, the filter is still being played uh, by the control processor. And if I speed it up, you hear how it, what it does. But now we're gonna we're gonna use the theremin to control the speed of that. So once again, we go from the theremin pitch out. I grab another cable and I plug this into the speed of the uh, sample and hold. So now you see, like, I get closer to the pitch antenna, the faster it speeds up. Now you could also apply this instead of uh, instead of applying it to the filter, you could also change it to the pitch of the Voyager. So what that sounds like, I just unplug it from the Voyager filter, plug it into the Voyager pitch, and now
And then these are analog effects also made by Moog Music. All right, so right now it's going through all five of these, but they're all turned off. So I'll just give a little demonstration of what these do, and I'm going to get the simplest sound I can on the Voyager itself. Nothing too fancy. put that, I'll, I'll go out of the theremin pitch into that. Next, there's the ring modulator. It combines two different frequencies together and spits out the sum and difference. And when you're in a really low frequency, it, get, it turns into that kind of vibrato where it's coming in and out. But as you start to go up, it turns into actual frequencies. And you get into the higher frequencies, it's like. So to, just to hear, this is the totally dry sound, and I'm going to mix in the ring modulator as I go. Which, by the way, that mix knob has a input for it. Although it's it's a uh, it's actually a little more fun to play with the frequency. One other convenient thing that I have on here on the, uh, the Mografoger control processor, which is a way of, of basically taking those signals and manipulating them in different ways, so it's not just a straight line from here to there, uh, is a multiplier. And so, you know, I was just showing you two different things. So one is where you, uh, you can use the theremin to control the frequency of the ring modulator. <laughs> Let me start, let me go a little higher there. And the other was where I was using it to control the mix. Well, let's say I wanted to do both. That's where the control processor comes in very handy because you can use that signal. I'm taking the theremin out and I am sending it to two different places. I'm sending it both to the ring modulator frequency and to the ring modulator mix. So what I'm trying to do here is as I get closer to the antenna, more of the affected sound happens and the frequency of it gets higher. So couple of decades of analog synthesizers being developed before you know anyone began making music with computers the foundation of all the you know the language and the structures that modern virtual instruments use is based on things that were established by early synthesizers early analog synthesizers you still have oscillators you still have filters you still have envelopes and the, the, uh, the DNA, if you will, of electronic music was established with analog synthesizers. I think anybody who's interested in electronic music should jump at the chance to play with some analog gear, whether it's the Cyborg or, you know, going down to a local music store and testing out a, a Moog Voyager or get, getting your hands on something retro.